Kibalaji, so good afternoon uh, in Europe and good morning in the US. Uh, as many of you know, our frescoes form from people uh, with many years' experience in the enterprise content management industry. Uh, we've got the co-founder of Docu and a lot of the team that work for him. We've got many people from Vignette, OpenText, and Farmet. And um, from our experience, ECM pricing is, is pretty complex. I remember going to a Docu University to learn about how to price the product. And it's also not very transparent. So um, what this presentation really does is take publicly available pricing information from a U.S. government site, the GSA Advantage site, and it combines it with a wealth of experience that we've got within ECM and also ECM pricing so that we can reveal and compare the different prices of not only the ECM products, but also the ECM stacks that you need to support these products, things like the operating system, the database, um, and the application server. Now, there's a white paper available which goes through actually a lot more detail than we have in the webinar. And a number of people have read that and given us feedback. And the feedback was, if they were configuring some of the proprietary systems, they'll probably use more servers. So if anything, we've kind of undercooked the price and been conservative on it. So this presentation is actually very factual, so I hope it's not too uh, dry and boring. So um, please, as Blodgy said, type in any questions and we'll do our best to answer them at the end. So from our perspective, uh, what we see, and it's reflected in uh, things like the Goldman Sachs studies, is you know, IT spend is declining. Really with the current situation around compliance and productivity, organizations are actually having to manage more content. They want more users having content management, but at dramatically lower cost. And what we're really looking today is the cost. And it's not some kind of flaky five-year ROI study that says, you know, if we can save you a million dollars a week over five years, therefore our product's worth $2 million. You know, we believe that you know, those long-term ROIs are pretty much irrelevant today. What people really cost about is the cost this year of the content management system, but also the infrastructure to support that. And if they already have that infrastructure, they should be able to reuse that for free if they already have a corporate license. So the whole goal of this webinar and white paper is really to, as I said, use publicly available information, either from U.S. government sites or from vendor sites, to review it, and to really make it available to drive transparency, to make it a tool for customers to question vendors like ourselves, but also document and open text, farmnet, vignette, and interwoven. And they should be able to ask the vendor to explain specifically what components are they selling, what are you getting, what extra software do you need to run that content management system, ask them how to break the cost down, and then ask them why it costs so much, because compared to open source content management systems, you can save over 90%. So ask them to explain why it's so expensive compared to open source. And we'll go through some details behind this graph on the right-hand side. So really the agenda for today <coughs> is to really look at ECM pricing and the models that typical vendors use. And they're pretty complicated. Uh, then look at the methodology we did for this, this research. Then look specifically at the cost for each ECM vendor, then look at specifically the cost of stacks to support enterprise content management, then look at our fresco, then do a summary and also show you where you can get more information. And specifically, the thing that's probably going to be interesting for people today is to access the white paper which has a lot of details on it. So when we started our fresco, you know, what we believed was wrong with the ECM industry was it was Content management was just very, very you know, expensive. It was actually too expensive to roll out to an organization. So that was just really one of the issues. It was also too hard to use, too hard to install, too hard to scale out to very large enterprises. And it was hideously proprietary. It's very, very difficult to switch from one enterprise content management system to another. And that has a big issue because you lose control of cost. You can't switch from that vendor. And it can often even tie you into the underlying stack as well. So what we believe is open source, yes, it has to be dramatically lower cost, but it has to be more. Uh, and what we said in the early days was it should be, our fresco should be, you know, because it's modern compared to many other systems that were written in the early 90s, it should be five times faster, a tenth of the cost, and as simple to use as a shared file drive. And really a lot of the innovation around open source is around the simplicity, to remove the complexity of the installation of the rollout and the end user experience. So there is a lot of innovation and we believe open source is more than just lower cost. So when you look at traditional ECM pricing models and myths, 
Um, you know, one of the classic things is it's phenomenally complicated. If you're inside an organisation, you, you have pretty experienced people who um, spend a long time learning how to configure a system and the cost for a system. So even if you had a pricing list, it's still pretty obtuse on how to see what the real price of a system is because often there are thousands of options. And um, you can classically call these this, the, the models the, the hidden extras pricing model. And a, and a good analogy is if you compare enterprise content management system pricing to the pricing of a car, you would literally have a steering wheel as an optional extra because some of the things you absolutely have to have with content management are very often extras. So it's very often a lack of transparency about what you've got and what you've bought, which has a massive implication when you get audited. And many firms are being audited because that's a significant revenue stream for large traditional ECM vendors. And a very common model is a mix of a number of things. So you very often get a cost per user, and it's not really based on fair usage. So if somebody uses a client software for one hour per year, and somebody uses it 24 hours a day, they both get exactly the same cost. The other classic thing as well with some systems, if you have a user that's at one point in time managing office documents, another point in time maybe they're collaborating, at another point in time they're reading a CAD file to look at the, the details of their building, they may get charged three times as three clients. So you charge basically on the type of content being accessed. That's a common thing as well. Um, also, if you look at it, it's based on usage within the server. How many servers you have? Is it an intranet, an internet, an extranet, or a website? Um, <clears throat> the other kind of thing we look at is what one of the common myths is that SharePoint is free. And within this um, white paper, we look at the, the cost of um, WSS, which is you know, Windows SharePoint services, but also what in reality you're going to be using in most situations, which is MOS, Microsoft Office SharePoint services. And that's also a little bit more complicated as well because there is a standard version of MOS and an enterprise version of MOS. Now, I'd encourage those of you who are looking at that kind of pricing as well. Uh, we developed a couple of separate white papers looking at you know, what is SharePoint and what does it cost. And if we look at the uh, registration at the end, where you can join the content community by joining once very simply, you get access to all white papers. So you get access to the, the ECM cost white paper but also the SharePoint comparison white paper and a whole bunch of other things as well. So the kind of basic system that we used as a methodology for this, this comparison was a classic content management system for the masses that most people would want to use in any large organization, where you can have an integration to Office, you have collaboration, you have content management with the classic things we expect, like 